that you should never let water touch the platform. Um, How okay. thick is the layer of chalk on the only platform? Very thick, and that makes it a pleasure to write on. It's bad for the lungs, actually, to inhale it. Oh, that's true. I am going to die young. <laughs> but it's better than a whiteboard. So, um, uh, good. So, the foreground model is that each data point is drawn from this line with this variance. And for the background data model, I'm just going to assume it's also a Gaussian, where it's, it is the probability of getting this data point is drawn from something that has nothing to do with the line. Just some mean and some variance that I don't care about. Right? So what I'm doing is I'm assuming that a fraction 1 minus p bad of the points are drawn from exactly the model we expect, but then the other fraction, p bad, are being drawn from some outlier distribution, which is just the bad points. And I don't care very much about this model. I'm just writing something down so that I can model them. Now, I've added three parameters. So now, in the end, the probability of my data is going to be given not just m and b, but also three more parameters. This overall amplitude p bad, and then this mean y bad, and this variance p bad. I now have changed a very simple two-dimensional problem, linear least square fitting two-dimensional problem, into a completely non-linear likelihood maximization in five dimensions. So at this point, everyone should be very upset because I've taken a very easy problem and I've made it very hard. And I just described to you a solution called sigma clipping, which is very easy, but I ruled it out on religious grounds. Okay, so you should be upset, except that last night and today you learned about the magic of MCMC. And a five-dimensional space like this is trivial for MCMC. You can run it on my ASUS EPC that cost me less than $300. Okay, so how does that work? So it works exactly the way we've done. I'm not going to bother showing you the. I'm not going to bother writing down MCMC now because I think we've had MCMC enough. But I am going to show you the results. So what do I do? I run MCMC in which I'm going to take, I started some guess for these parameters. You can take guesses. Where should we start? Well, you guys know that the slope is about 2 here. You know that from last night. So let's start at a slope of 2 <laughs> and an offset down here around 30. Remember, 2 and 30 is about right. So we can start there or we can start in an arbitrary place. As Bill showed, it doesn't really matter where we start. If I solution is fine. And then we have to choose parameters for p bad, y bad, and v bad. Well, what fraction of the data points do you think are bad, roughly? 10%. Say again? 10%. 10 percent, maybe. There looks like 3 out of 20, so maybe 15 percent. But 10 or 15 percent. So you put in something like that for p bad. What, what should we put in for these? This is the mean and variance of the bad points. Well, we don't know what to put in there, so I suggest we put in something like the mean and the variance of all the points. And we'll just start there, and we'll just let the MCMC go. It's going to trowel around in, these, in this five-dimensional space, and we'll produce a sampling of the posterior probability distribution function up here. Okay? Now, in the end, all I care about is M and B. So that means I want to marginalize, not slice, I want to marginalize my output and just look at the M and B distributions. But the beautiful thing about MCMC is it does that marginalization for me. The distribution of M values in my Markov chain is the marginalized distribution of M values. The distribution of B values in my Markov chain is the marginalized distribution of B values. So this my MCMC will not just optimize this five-dimensional likelihood, it will marginalize over it. Okay, so marginalization is a key issue. So let me just take this up and say the word marginalization. And actually, it is because of marginalization that I'm amazing. So uh, Bill accused me of being a religious zealot 
And I would object if it weren't true. Um, the reason I became a zealot for Bayesianism is the following. So I, these hints are now on the web. The reason I became a Bayesian is the following. What I care about is the parameters M and B. The parameters M and B are, is the marginalization over P bad, uh, P bad, DY bad, D, B bad, P of, this is a chalk, it's failing me, P of M, B, P bad, Y bad, B bad, given the data. Right? That's marginalization. You have a five-dimensional space. You only care about two of the dimensions. You marginalize over the others. Note that you can only do this if you're a Bayesian. Why? Because this function has what units? It has units 1 over m, 1 over b, 1 over p, 1 over y, 1 over v. Right? It's a probability distribution function. It integrates to unity. That means its units are 1 over the integrand. Right? Nodding? Please nod. Thank you. Um, this thing has the units of 1 over all those things. If I want to do this integral and get something with the right units at the end, I have to be a Bayesian. I have to have turned my likelihood into a probability distribution function. The only mathematically or dimensionally, forget about math, the only dimensionally correct thing you can do is be a Bayesian. So I'm a Bayesian, I'm a religious zealot for Bayesianism because it's the only thing that's dimensionally correct. Nothing else you can do in this problem is dimensionally correct. Um, and I'm a physicist, so I evaluate everything on the basis of its dimensions. Okay, so I ran that Markov chain before the show, and now I'm going to show it to you. So what I'm going to do now, I've run that Markov chain, and now when I run that model, it does find a finite p bad, it does find a finite y bad, and it does find a finite v bad, and it, the straight line slope, the m and b, is clearly being drawn by the points which are in fact close to the line. So all I did was implement that mixture model and just run it, and it, it gave me slopes which I think look a lot better than the previous slope. Okay, so, and what are these lines? Why am I plotting not one line by many lines? I'm plotting many lines because I'm a Bayesian, and I don't believe that there's a line. I believe that there's a sampling from the posterior probability distribution to plot here. So this is 16 samples, or 10, or six, I think maybe 10 samples drawn from my MCMC chain. Now, but there's more. Can you see those numbers? Very faint numbers. Let me try. See, you're more sensitive to changing things in your visual field. So you see a little hand that turns into a watch. And also those numbers. Okay, so what are those numbers? Well, what, I've been, what you can do in this mixture model is for any data point now, because you have a probability, you have these things are actual probabilities. You can ask for each data point in the context of any one model, what's the probability that that data point is bad? I.e., what's the probability that that data point comes from this part of the mixture as opposed to this part of the mixture? So if you're way out in the tails, you have to have come from this part of the mixture. And if you're in the center, you're more likely to have come from this part of the mixture. So uh, what I've done is then marginalized over the chain. So these, those numbers there are completely marginalized odds that each, oh actually it's the log base 10, I think, odds that each of those points is on the relation. What does that mean? That means if I, if I am willing to wager one dollar that this data point, sorry, one euro, that this data point is not on the line, you should be willing to wager 10 to the 24.9 euros that it is. OK? 
Yeah. Yeah. Other way around. Other way around.